Coming to you live from the Cowboys headquarters in Frisco. Deep in the heart of Texas, it's the star at night. Wow, dramatic much? Why are you getting in the way of my intro? You mean our intro? We're your hosts. I'm Kelsey Charles. And I'm David Hellman. Okay, let's just start this show now. <laughs> what is up, my good people? Welcome to an edition of The Star at Night, where your hosts, Kelsey Charles and David Hellman. And Dave, um, it is yet again another very uneventful week up here at The Star in Frisco. <laughs> nothing happened, nothing new, nothing to talk about. So um, I don't even know why we're recording a show because there's, you know, you no. You just want to sign off? You want to go, you want to, we could go get drinks? I mean, we could. I'm not opposed to it. But I, I guess before we do that, maybe we could talk about uh, Jalen Smith. Yeah, um, that is one thing that did go down this week. And I think a lot of people weren't as surprised by the move itself, but they were surprised by the timing. And in true David Hellman fashion, you were not in a position to be reporting about it because that is just how life works out for you. At least I wasn't on a date this time. That's true. It was true. my own disappointment and not the disappointment of a potential <laughs> spouse. So that's nice. You know what, honestly, I mean, we're, we're beyond. It's the beauty. It's the beauty of uh, filming television. That as soon as we got the last episode of this show in the can, we found out Jalen Smith was no longer with us. Sure. I'm just thinking, honestly, if they're willing to fire a guy that's worth seven point two million dollars, they'll fire me whenever the hell they want to. So I'm right. walking on eggshells this week. Okay. That's really what I'm thinking about. I mean, honest. I feel the same way, but I also, I, I kind of want to draw some conclusions from this because again. If they are willing to take that cap hit and, you know, there were circumstances at play, that must mean that they have a lot of faith in what they're putting on the field right now. And dare I say, uh, Micah Parsons and the potential of your guy, LSU, Cox coming up and just really making an impact in this defense. Yeah, absolutely. And this is something that we've talked about this week is you don't just decide to do this out of the blue. This is the result of weeks and weeks and even months of learning what you have in the other guys. The Cowboys had all the faith in the world that Micah Parsons was a, a, a badass, excuse me. Seeing him do it is another thing altogether. And yes, they've had a month to watch Jabril Cox. By the way, they get Keanu Neal back from COVID-19 this week. They're expecting him to play against the Giants. They have a wealth of depth. And when you think about potentially owing Jalen $9 million, it's unfortunate, but I get it. Yeah. So. Definitely some um, news going down. I think, again, not surprised in the logic behind it, but definitely surprised in the timing. But when you really start to map it out, the reasons why some of the injury guarantees there were at play, it does make sense. And unfortunately for Dalen, I mean, obviously, I think that this was a guy that came in and there was a really amazing story and you thought this was going to be the comeback of the century. And he had a couple years there that it looked like he was really, truly turning it around. And you know, happy for him for that. But uh, I, I all in, I was texting you. I was like, I, I guess I don't know what the Cowboys would grade the Jalen Smith era here in Dallas. And that's that's what makes it so interesting is that's a hard grade to give out because the Cowboys deserve a lot of credit for Jalen Smith bouncing back. And like, I'm the first one to make glib comments. I was just joking about getting fired a minute ago. <laughs> but like all this week since we've heard this news, all I can think about is the amount of time we spent watching Jalen Smith on the practice fields at Valley Ranch before yeah. the star was even a thing. Yep. Wondering if he'd ever be able to run properly again. The medical miracle. He got to a Pro Bowl. He played two really good seasons of linebacker for this team. It's hard to look at it right now as a happy ending. I mean, the deal didn't work out. You don't cut a guy two years into a massive extension and call it a success. That's just is what it is. Yeah. But all jokes, all kidding aside, like Jalen Smith deserves a lot of credit. The Cowboys deserve credit for having faith in him. It's sad that it didn't work out, but you can't take that success away from him. I mean, think back to the Fiesta Bowl when he tore all those ligaments in his leg, the amount of people that said he would never amount to anything athletically after that. Yep. You can't take that from him. And I'm sorry if it sounds corny, but that's worth considering as well. For sure. Well, the Jalen Smith era might be over here in Dallas, but the season must go on. We're going to break down some of the things to watch for here in this Giants game coming up next.
Welcome back, everyone. Good news, David Hellman is still here. There's no depth behind me on the writing staff, Kels. It's just me and Rob Phillips. <laughs> they can't get rid of me. Yeah. Um, that's what I tell myself. Supposed job security. All right, okay, so um, since you are, you know, so imperative to this team, David, I'd like to get your oh, no. analysis oh, no. on um, <laughs> this upcoming matchup, some of the major storylines. Jason Garrett, I mean, listen, we talked about this before. It's been about 365 days since Dak Prescott went down. Week five against the Giants at home. So it really is a little eerie that um, we're back again. It's not eerie. I, I wrote about this, actually. Thank you for the chance to plug. You're welcome. This is by design. It's by design. Come on. <laughs> Conspiracy. There's, I, know that, I know that they generated through a computer. There's no way it's a coincidence Dak's playing this game a year after the fact. I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe I'm – where's are. my tinfoil hat? Truly, truly. Sorry. Someone please uh, give that to this man immediately. Okay, but um, someone who's not wearing a tinfoil hat, is that really the transition I'm going with? Yep. It is. <laughs> uh, Daniel Jones. <laughs> Daniel Jones, uh, opposing quarterback for the New York Giants, yes. taking over in Eli Manning's shoes. Okay, I want to talk about him for a minute because – He's doing a job of holding onto the ball. He only has two turnovers so far this season. Talk to me what, about what this defense is going to face against him. I really hate the way Daniel Jones is changing the narrative because I already made up my mind that he's not a good quarterback. He can't <laughs> hold onto the ball. And what's he do? He goes down to New Orleans and throws for 400. Beats a, I'm not going to call him a good Saints team, but beats a Saints team in a very hostile environment, their first home game after Hurricane Ida. What are they facing in him? I mean, if he can throw for 400 yards against that secondary, I think he can do it against this one. And also, I'm not kidding. It's easy to joke. I know we all saw him trip over himself in that game last year. But he is a dynamic athlete. He is a guy that you got to watch. We <laughs> saw Sam Darnold rush for two touchdowns last week when Carolina came to town. I think you got to worry about that with Daniel Jones as well. This is a bigger challenge than I, than I want to admit it is, and I hate saying that. Okay, so let's break down some of the weapons that he might be using against this team. Um, he doesn't have as many as maybe previously. It feels like Thank you. Ingram and Galladay are two of the main guys, and, and Ingram was having some moments this year where even the fan base, he would turn against him. So are we to be concerned about this, especially when you've got guys like Diggs who are playing out of their minds? Well, I, honestly, I, I'm not going to go as far as to say I feel bad for the Giants, but, like, they got a, a mash unit going on here. Darius Slayton, their deep threat, not practicing right now with a hamstring. Sterling Shepard, not practicing with a hamstring. Saquon Barkley, limited with a knee. He'll play. Uh, it, like, they're, uh, Kenny Galladay, excuse me, also with a groin, limited. I don't know who Daniel Jones is going to be working with, to be honest with you. His left tackle, Andrew Thomas, has a foot issue as well. So They're going to pull up Broncos and try to go into the coaching staff and be like, listen, Look, who played previously at one point or another? Can we insert you into the lineup? I mean, Jason Garrett, oh, he played quarterback. That doesn't help anybody. It's fine. Daniel, Daniel Jones goes outside. I'm Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm guessing half of those guys are going to play. It's not as if to say they won't have any talent, but this is a banged-up unit right now. Yeah. I would like to think – that favors a Cowboys defense that has had injury issues of its own. Okay, so let's dive into Saquon Barkley a little bit more because, again, you just mentioned the fact that he's a little bit limited right now in practice. But he is a guy that when he is full health, we talked about it previously in other episodes, that he truly is an offensive threat, especially on the ground. But I have to say, in the Saints game last week, he had 126 total yards. So that's something to say for sure. So are we totally writing him off? Do we think this injury is going to impair him at all? Or are we thinking, hey, listen, we got to really focus on the run game this week? Write him off at your own peril. Uh, well, and that's the thing with Saquon Barkley is he's a hell of a running back. He's, I mean, he he rushed for the game-winning touchdown in New Orleans last week. He also hit uh, a 50-yard reception that put them back in the game, a touchdown pass from Daniel Jones that put the Giants back in it with six minutes to play. He can hurt you both ways. If you think back before he was injured as a rookie, he was a 1,000-yard rushing, 1,000-yard receiving threat. And, yeah, it's, so he's a challenge for your linebackers and your safeties in a variety of ways, not just as a runner, but if they lose him over the middle of the field – hey, this is a great opportunity for the Cowboys to prove that they got a lot faster at linebacker this year, whether it's Micah Parsons, whether it's playing J. Ron Curse as a nickel-dime linebacker. Either way, get some speed on the field to deal with that guy. Okay, so switching gears into the other side of the ball, I mean, we know that Amari Cooper looks like he's going to be back and, and, you know, playing. We're not concerned about that at all. Kellen Moore has plenty of weapons to toy around with when it comes to facing his uh, predecessor previously at here in Dallas. But I, I, I got to ask, defensively um 
are we concerned at all about this Giants defense or like what exactly are they going to face? Famous last words, but I'm, I'm not concerned. I just, Leonard Williams is a great player. Awesome B-roll from producer Caden. Good for you. I, 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 I don't know. I'm not worried about it. They got a lot of talent in the secondary. They signed a Dory Jackson. They have James Bradbury, who's one of the better corners in the league. But I don't seem, think they've seen a passing attack like this Cowboys offense. And I don't think they have the linebackers with Blake Martinez being hurt to hold up against what we've seen from the Dallas run game. Uh, Aziz Ojolari is a name to know on the edge, a guy who's got three sacks. But again, I'll take the Dallas offensive line against that. Like I said, I, I feel bad for maybe jinxing them or whatever if you believe in that type of crap. But if the Cowboys are able to have the success that we've seen against the likes of Carolina and Philadelphia and even Los Angeles, they should be able to score points against the Giants. They just should. All right, so we've talked enough about um, Daniel Jones and the New York football Giants. Enough. I want to talk about my guy, Dak Prescott. We get you guys to chime in. We want to know how many yards you think he's going to tally this week. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Star at Night. Kelsey's letting me drive this segment because I'm good at it. Not my best week last week against Carolina. Wow. But I'm still ahead of all you losers in our fan segment, <laughs> you included. No, we're tied. Whatever. My name starts with D, yours starts with K, so I win alphabetically. I'm in the lead in our over, under, under review standings. Look at that. David Hellman. Wow, I thought I was above five. Honestly, I'm just going to say this. I think producer Caden is playing a little pre preferential treatment there. Like, since we are tied, we should probably be on the same level. I mean, no. And I'm cooler than you. And so, again, by default, I win. <sighs> Whatever. All right, how about you read these over-unders so I can go ahead and really cement my win here? I'm taking the lead back this weekend, and it's starting right here <laughs> with Dak Prescott's performance in this game. Over-under, show us the graphic. I want to know if you think he's going over under 299.5 passing yards. What do you got? Honestly, he's averaging less than that, but I, I can't help but think this is a guy – This. Is, He's playing with a bit of a chip on his shoulder, especially in a week like this when it means so much to him. Just historically what last year did. I'm going to go with over. Like, I think Dak's going to come out, play out of his mind. Give me the over. I, I hate this. I, I want to take the over, and if I say the same thing as you, then I can't win. Yeah. He's going to go over. He's going to throw for, like, 400 yards in this game. He's done it a bunch of times. He loves dropping dimes on this giant secondary. Mm -hmm. I think we're in for some fireworks on Sunday. I'm going over. All right. We talked about Saquon. Oh, I forgot about the fans. I'm so sorry. We all said over. How's anybody supposed to win if we all say the same thing? <laughs> we can't help that we're all so smart. We got to stop playing teams that suck. That's the problem. We yeah, need to well, start playing good teams. It's kind of fun this way. I'm not going to lie. All right. Let's, we talked about Saquon in the last segment. It's Saquon Barkley. We know all about him. He's back. He's healthy. He's playing well. 99.5 rushing yards over under. What do you think? Gosh, I mean, again, like, I have to give him the over I as much as I don't want to. What the hell, man? I just don't feel like our run D is where it should be quite yet. Uh, you know, I, I feel like some of these guys were getting blown off the ball last week. I was a little concerned with that at times. Uh, I don't know. I You know, I just feel like okay, it's he, fine. No. he has the opportunity to do it. I think Jason Garrett's going to want to utilize him. I know that he likes to use the run now, game. that is and a really good point. Jason Garrett's going to hand it to him 35 times in yes. the game. Yes, and so I feel like he has the ability to easily overcome that 99 and a half. May I? Sure. He's going to go under. And the beauty of it is, I was going to say over until you said that, but I'm just, I'm just trying to beat you. That's all I care about. And okay. here's the thing. What happens? The fans said under. Well, crap. Now I got the fans agreeing with me. This is terrible. <laughs> Here's the, the Cowboys are going to have a big lead. The Giants won't be able to run. That's what I was trying to say. He's okay. going to run for 45 yards just because the Cowboys are going to win by I 17. respect that logic. Okay. Let's that's wrap fine. this thing up. Giants points, 19 and a half. This is, I hate to give Caden this kind of credit, but this is right on the money of what it probably should be historically. I looked this up okay. heading into this game. In Dak's seven wins against the Giants over the last few years, they're averaging 19 points a game in those outings. So what do you think, over or under? Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, give me the over. Why not? <laughs> that you, you just, where, where's your expert analysis? You got anything I for just, me? honestly, like, I feel like this could kind of go either way. And I feel like, again, like, you have a lot of motivated people for many reasons on either side of the ball. I think that there's 
I, I, but if I'm going over, I'm giving more points to the Cowboys by far. I mean, I, I've got the Cowboys scoring 35, 38 in this game, yeah, I like think. Yeah, it just but feels like. Just to spite you, I'm going to say under. I'm going to say like 35, 17 Let's sounds go. fun. So there, we're going to get some separation here this week. <laughs> and really, that's all I care about. And the fans are with me again. So, he, wow, Kelsey. Yeah. When this game's over, you're probably either going to be alone in first or in dead last. That's how I like it. I hope you feel okay with that. Life on edge baby I don't feel like this game has a lot of stakes I think the Cowboys are going to win comfortably mm -hmm. but we got stakes here at the star at night and we will be back to break down everything that happened here probably have some more unexpected news on a random <laughs> Tuesday if I had to guess Love it. it's always entertaining on our show with the Dallas Cowboys thanks for watching bye guys